Hey, greetings, greetings, greetings once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, indeed is Lord. He's over it all. And in him, we live, we move, we have our being. Um... Yeah, and amidst all that goes on right now in this life, amidst all that's taking place around us at any given time, you know, we seek, as the followers of Christ in such a day and such a time as this, we seek to do the will of the Father as He would lead and guide and direct us. So that is always part of the challenge of this life because everything that the world brings to us and everything the world tries to bring against us is to try to take us off of that track because you know we've got to always remember that uh, the war that takes place on this earth <clears throat> it is less to do with us and more to do with this this uh, this uh, attack this angelic rebellion that took place where the enemies of, of our souls um, Lucifer and the devil with the fall um, because the enemy could not get to God and he was cast out of heaven, um, the closest thing that he could try to attack was that which was made in the image and the likeness of God. That which was made in the um, by God's design, um, made <clears throat> for his purposes, his plan, his pleasure. So the attack that the enemy does is to try to take us away from that which God had designed, that which God had put in place, that which God intended, and to rob us from being made in his image and his likeness. So the role that you'll see so often with Antichrist is to do that which is anti the will of God. So when God puts something in place, when God wants and desires something, when God says, this is good, the enemy will say, no, 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 that's bad. And when God says something is bad, the enemy will be like, no, 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 that's good. So that, that is Antichrist. You'll see the, the antithesis, the, <clears throat> the opposite of that which is what God intended. And so when we talk about the world, um, you know, there's, there's, and this is again back to a little bit of that original language kind of thing in the scriptures. But when the Bible talks about the world, um, there's one one sense in one sense there's the planet of the world the planet the the trees the flowers the the globe that's one sense of the world but the one when we typically are speaking about the world here we're speaking about it in the other sense which is that system <clears throat> that antichrist system a world system that is built that is set up at enmity with god at enmity with the truth um, to try to push and to try to move forward that which is anti um, God's plan and purpose for his creation. So, you know, all of this goes back, you know, to the very start of, of um, this cosmic clash on this planet, you know, and <clears throat> the world and the world system that has continued to grow, um, it, has, it has grown and done so by harvesting the souls of men and women by using their efforts, their talents, their abilities, their skills, um, their gifts that they've been given, and co-opting them and bringing them into um, a system and involving and engaging their free will as well in that, in, and in exchange for their, their being given over to that system, you know, they'll, they'll oftentimes get, you know, a little bit of a lap around the track. Sometimes they don't even get that because the devil is uh, a liar. The devil is a thief. The devil is a deceiver. So sometimes they don't even get that. They just get the promise of that. They just get the, which the devil breaks his promises. So, um, but that system is built off of all of that. That system is built off of the harvesting of the soul, the harvesting of the power, the harvesting of your your will, your intention, your volition, your that which is which is in you. So when a follower of Christ um, now begins to walk out of that, because the bond has been is has has been paid, the debt has been paid in full, the bond has been broken, I should say, 
um, in Christ Jesus, and eternal life is a gift that he gives to those that would receive it and those that are called to, to follow him and those that respond to the call. Um, now the world can't hold you. Now there's no ability that the world has to be able to hold you, to keep you, to, to, um, to keep you from being uh, what God intended you to be and to keep you from walking out of your prison cell. Um, so now the battle is on for the mind. At that stage, the battle is on for the consciousness. At that stage, because the world has lost its legal right to keep you, because the debt now has been paid, a sufficient price has been paid for the debt that was owed, because the world has lost that, now it needs to, um, it, now it needs to attack your mind to get you to think something other than what the actual spiritual reality is, you know, <clears throat> um, because there's many, many, many things that are there for the children of God. There are many, many, many things that are there that are part of your birthright, part of your um, your inheritance in Christ Jesus as an as an heir, as a co-heir in, with Christ. There are many things that are yours, but the world wants to keep you from accessing those. The devil, the enemy of your soul, the human agents that work in concert with the devil want to keep you from accessing those things. Because if you move in that power, um, it, it's it's bad for them. It's bad for business for them. It's bad for their system. It's bad for uh, all the other souls that they're trying to keep uh, all the way into the grave and they want to harvest them and recycle them. It's, it's bad for all of that. So they put a massive effort to keep you from ever moving forward in who you are in Christ. They they bring forward their people to try to infiltrate, to try to come into your circles, to um, <clears throat> to to work their way in, and to try to earn your trust, and only just to absorb your time, uh, your efforts, get you wrapped up in, in meaningless things, um, you know, to get you to self-doubt, to gaslight you, to tell you what, what you thought was not what you thought, what you heard is not what you heard. You know, all of those are just games. Now, wh why? Because if, <clears throat> if they can get you um, down these, these distracting paths, these, um, these roads that lead to nowhere, well, that's all time and energy and effort that you don't put into that which is real. That's all time and energy and effort that you don't put into that which um, <clears throat> was God's intention for you. Now, Jesus was the master of, of uh, using time and energy and um, God's plan and purpose and, and showing, showcasing for us a way to do it. You know, so when he showcased for us, you know, this is how you live. This is how you live a successful life. This is how you live a fulfilled life. Well, what did he, what were some hallmarks of that? Well, he said, I only do what I see the Father doing. He said, you know, I only speak the words I receive from the Father. So those are, those are just a part and parcel of it. What else? Well, everybody else had their intention for him. Everybody else had their, their, um, expectation of him. They wanted him to be a conquering king. They tried to do that with him. That didn't work. They wanted to set him up. <clears throat> um, they wanted to, to get him to, you know, be a judge over them, to get them to be, to do all kinds of things that everybody had in their mind of the way that they wanted to make Jesus fit their personal agenda. Because everybody's got a personal agenda. Um, you know, and they want to make God fit their personal agenda. You know, we, how, does that happen today? Absolutely. Um, the, uh, most people that go to a, a quote-unquote church on a Sunday go there with a personal agenda. You know, they go there for business context. They go there for the social element. They go there to, uh, to meet a spouse. Uh, they go there to try to find somebody else's spouse. Um, you know, whatever the, the agenda is that people go to, and they go and they, they utilize these things, but God is who he is. And the challenge that, that, um, that people oftentimes have is that, one, when you get close to Jesus, you end up getting a true revelation of who you are, because he is the truth. And so when people come into contact with the truth, a lot of times they don't like it, because it reveals who they are. And in John chapter 6, uh, you know, when people came into contact with the truth, most of the people left him.
most of the people walked away because it was hard. You know, they first showed up because they were like, wow, this is where the power is. Wow, this is where, uh, how many people wanted to make Jesus a meal ticket? You know, he fed the 5,000 and they were hunting for him all over the place afterwards because they wanted just to keep him around because, hey, if there's, if there's food and this guy's coughing up the food, then, um, yeah, let's, let's make him king. Let's, let's, uh, cause you know, we don't want to work. We don't want to do anything else. We can just, we can just hang out with this guy and, and everything will be good. But, you know, that's not what Jesus was doing. But when he gave them truth, you know, when he gave them the reality of, of, of life, when they gave them the reality of who they were, you know, what, what happens, you know, with, with, with the follower of Christ? Well, one of two things happen. <clears throat> Either people change what they do, which is called repentance, or they change what they believe. And most people that have a personal agenda are not willing for God to be who he is and not willing for God to be God um, and for him to be Lord and their sovereign and for them to be in subjection to him. Uh, most people, that what they do is they will change what they believe. And what they do is they try to fashion a Jesus in their own image. They try to fashion a Jesus in their own likeness so that they now have something that they can worship that fits their personal agenda. But that, my friends, is a road to your own personal destruction. That is what Scripture talks about <clears throat> when it says that there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, in Proverbs 14, Proverbs 16. Um, that, my friends, is what it talks about when it says that because they refuse to love the truth, in Romans, because they refuse to love the truth, God gives them over to a powerful delusion that believing the lie, you know, they, they, they're damned. So that is a dangerous road to go on. But God allows for free will, and so people choose free will, um, and they utilize it, and they will choose to go the way of their own deception. So that is changing what you believe and trying to fashion, you know, your own Jesus, or you change what you do, which is repentance. And that is the path of life and truth. And what repentance does is that is a, a harsh and a hard reality because you come into the light. And when you come into the light, everything's exposed. When you come into the light, you see everything for what it is. When you come into the light, you see yourself for what you are. And you also recognize your need for a Savior. You're just like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I can't do this without you, God. I can't do this without, without you um, being you, you saving me. I can't do this without you. So that is, um, <clears throat> and then what happens is, is then God gives you the power to be able to be a witness. God gives you the power to be able to um, to follow Him, to do the will of the Father to to make the changes that need to be uh, need to take place in your life. He gives you the power to walk out. Sometimes um, some people you're in you're in a really tough situation when God calls you. And sometimes that situation stays for uh, an extended period of time. But what God will do is he will give you the power to be able to even um, do certain things in and through that situation, and he also give you the power, the ways, the means, the ideas to walk out of so many things, and you've got to listen to him. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this is also too part of the, um, the the. This is where the scriptures are also given to us as something that is there to help us during our time while we're here on the earth. Uh, just sip of lovely Sri Lankan tea that my amazing wife made for me. Um, so, oh, so good. So, yeah, so, you know, God <clears throat> put the word there for us. <clears throat> and, um, and he gives us um, the word because it, it, it gives us um, instruction. You know, if, if um, just the other day I was talking... Um, with my wife about this, just the book of Proverbs is if 
if people just lived, if just the world lived by the book of Proverbs, just that one book in the scriptures, if a city lived by that book, if a family lived by that book, if an individual just lived by that book, the world would be an incredible, incredible, incredible place. Just the instructions that are in that one book. Because the instructions that are in that one book are, <clears throat> are there for the sake of you having a successful and a good life. You know, there are, all of it is extremely practical. And how many people have read the book of Proverbs? How many people would, 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 um, would go into that? You know, when I, was in, when I was in college, I remember I had some professors and, and in some of the conversations that we would have, they would tell me, even with some of the, some of the best business books that they knew of, some, one of the foundational texts that they would draw on for principles would be the book of Proverbs. Now, God gives you the book of Proverbs. <laughs> you know, you can, you can go buy a, a, a used Bible uh, at, a, at a bookstore, you can buy a new Bible for not very much of a cost, or you can buy this college textbook, which is a knockoff. It won't be as timeless or as pertinent advice for much, much more money. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> there's 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 so much that's in there for us. Now, the thing about the word is, <clears throat> a lot of times people will struggle with the scriptures because um, you know it's not an intellectual pursuit. You can approach it like that, and there's a lot of things that you learn from that, but it's all head knowledge. <clears throat> when you read the Word, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the Word to you, because it is Him that unlocks the Word so that you can understand it, so that you can receive it. Um, you know, in, in the Scriptures, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and, you know, He said, look, you guys, you guys, you guys have never once heard the voice of God. Never. He said, "You know, you 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 diligently study the scriptures because you think by them that you're you're gonna know God. You think that by them that you're gonna you're gonna get to this truth. But um, if you actually knew the scriptures, you would know that it's they're testifying of me, and I'm right here. So you don't know God, and you don't know me, and you don't know truth. Now, they didn't like that one at all. They didn't like the reality of that one. And." Um, but the reality of it is that, um, yeah, you know, it's... Now, just imagine that. Here's a set of people that, in order to be in that role in that society, uh, if you would have had to have memorized, um, you know, the Pituitak, you'd have had to have memorized the very first five... <clears throat> first, first five books of the Scriptures, you know, the Mosaic Law... Uh, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you'd have had to have known every, every one of those verses by heart. And so they, had, they knew head knowledge, knew the scriptures. But within their heart and within their spirit, they'd never once heard the voice of God and they did not know God. So, you know, the, the, the knowing that God has for his people is... A consummation of the Spirit, and it is a oneness with Him, where you know Him and He knows you, and that is not subject to the um, <clears throat> to the uh, approval of man. It's not subject to the um, gatekeepers of man. That is between you and the Father, and He's made the way for that through the Holy Spirit, so that you. Um, and, and through the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross, so that you can have that. And that, for you, my, my friends, is your, your victory in this place. That is your answer for whatever ails you. Whenever there's a situation, whenever there's a problem, whenever there's something that, that you, you need to address, you need to deal with, you can go straight to the throne of God. You, can, you have direct access to the Father. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I remembered something you know too when I was a when I was a kid, and I um, and in my early days and growing up in Sri Lanka, um, so my my grandfather in this country was uh, um, he was a very famous uh, advertising man. He was the start of the very first ad agency in the country, actually. Um, you know, probably I mean, well over sixty years ago now. 
And, um, I mean, he's since passed and God, God bless him. And, um, <clears throat> but, you know, in those, I remember, you know, as a kid, um, because I was his grandson, I could show up at this, you know, big office. I could walk past security. I could walk right past the secretary and I could go straight into his office and, and sit down in his office and, and say hi to him and talk to my grandfather. Um, I didn't have to wait at the security. I didn't have to get an appointment with the secretary. I didn't have to go through all the protocols. I didn't have to write a, a paper and appear before some board meeting. No, I was his grandson. And because I was his grandson, I could just walk right in at any time because I had the access. And you brothers and sisters in Christ. Now let's go to our Heavenly Father. Let's go to the kingdom. Let's go to the reality of who you are in Christ. You know, you can walk right in. The scriptures give us, they tell us that. You can boldly go before the throne of grace. You can, you, you can go straight to your Father. You have an advocate. It's all right there. Now what does the enemy want to do? No, the enemy wants to tell you that, you know, you're not a son, you're not a daughter. That if you want to get to God, if you want to, to see the, the, if you want to see the man in charge, <laughs> you know, um, you've got to book an appointment. You know, you need to do this, you need to do that. You need to twist and turn yourself into all different things and all different combobulations. No, not for a son, not for a daughter. That's not the way it works. You know, as a son, as a daughter, you walk right in. Because you, the, the way has been made for you through Christ Jesus, you walk right in. And the conversation that you have with your father is the conversation you have with your father. You, it's not, you're not talking to, oh, thou that flung the stars in the skies and created thy, thy firmament. You no, know, that, <laughs> you know, open up your heart. And let there be communication. Let there be the reality of who you are with him. You know, Jesus, Jesus restored that. Jesus restored the breach that was created in the fall so that you could have a real relationship with him. And God receives us and the price is paid and the blood is shed for the remission of sins so that there is nothing that can keep you separate. So now in the reality of who you are, walk in that. See, what the enemy always wants to do is to keep you away from that reality. Because also, the enemy doesn't have that. He doesn't have that access. And he knows because also too, you know, the, the fall of, of a third of the angels and all of, uh, you know, all of them, they knew what that was. And they hate the fact that you have that and you, your eternal destiny is for that. And they will never know that again. So every time that they see you, every time that they see <clears throat> you, they, they absolutely despise you because of who you are and who they are not. So if you if you read the book of Enoch, you know there's there's you know even in that book there is a um, a petition by the the fallen angels to Enoch to see if there's some way that some sort of bridge could be made and and the, you know some sort of and there wasn't there was no going back for them. There was no going back for them. But you, child of the living God, the way has been made for you to walk in the reality of who you are. Now, what are some things about the reality of who you are? Well, <clears throat> along with being a co-heir in Christ Jesus and having um, direct access to the throne of God where you can go there continually, you can live in that place, actually, because the scriptures have even told us that we are to pray continually. So you, you can be in communion with the Father at all times throughout your life and throughout your day. Now, there's, um, you know, part of the way I was taught was, you know, there's the act of prayer, 
which is when we pray, when we, you know, when we stop and when we, you know, really focus in. And then there's the state of prayer where you can be in, from that place, you can walk in communion with the Spirit of the living God throughout your entire day. You can always be in a state of prayer. Now, the enemy wants to get you out of that state of prayer, <clears throat> to get you distracted, to get you pulled to and fro, to get you going left, right, and center, and all over the place, rather than um, walking with the Father and focusing on Him. That is, and, and He doesn't want you to pray, because He also knows that when you pray, things change. See, things happen in the realm of the Spirit, and then they manifest themselves into the natural. So if you are just trying to deal with things from a natural realm, from a natural perspective, then you're missing a huge chunk of this. Because on a natural level, yeah, there's certain things that come up and that need to happen, but they are so often the manifestation of what has been taking place in the realm of the Spirit. That's why those that are on the enemy's side, they recognize that, and they do so much to try to stunt the spiritual progress and the spiritual growth of the children of God and and, you know, they want to keep them away from that. So, you know, so much of, of the, the things that are thrown at people are to keep them away from, from, their, from moving forward in the realm of the Spirit. Because just a bit of prayer, <clears throat> a bit of seriousness, a bit of persistence, as led by the Holy Spirit, mind you, is... It creates and, and allows for and results in incredible things. I mean, all of you that are out there that, that listen, that also participate in uh, 20 on 20, which is coming up really soon, by the way, guys. Um, you know, the 20th is coming up this Friday. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be going live, um, you know, with with Zef and Kunita and, uh, and Patrick and, uh, um, and Amelia and we'll see if John and Violet are going to join us and just and then everybody else that's there that prays okay that is just one time once a month where all of us and all of you that listen come together and we all get together before God and we pray and we've seen literally the world change as we've been doing that and an entire uh, um unveiling uh, happened since this whole thing began as led by God's Spirit. Now, <clears throat> in that situation, yeah, you know, just, I mean, like, where, where else? Where else would you like to pray? What else would you like to bring before God? What else would you, would, what else is on your mind and on your heart that needs to be addressed? Well, how often have we tried to do so many things and run round and round and round the mulberry bush, you know, but we don't actually address something at the root of where it needs to be done. We don't actually go to the one that can make the decision. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay, I'll share a, a piece of advice that was also given to me one time by a friend of mine that I worked with in, 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 uh, in D.C., Maryland, Brilliant guy. Um, this guy had like two doctorates. I mean, really, really smart guy. And, you know, one thing that he told me during that time is he said, he said, Govinda, he said, you know, if you look at it, he said, in every company out there, there is always one person that makes the decision. And he said, what you need to do is you need to find out who that person is. And that's the person that you need to be talking to. And it was an interesting thing because, you know, I found that to be true as time has gone on, is that, you know, if you, because why? Because, you know, a lot of times you'll end up talking to all these other people, you know, within a, within a company, but they're not really the ones that make the decision. And the result of that is that you end up, if it's something that is going to go forward, you end up having to then go up and then present to the decision maker at some point. So you end up presenting again and again and again when you could have just presented once or you could have just talked to the one person that makes the decision and the choice. Okay, <clears throat> so that being said, well, let's go forward into the realm of the Spirit. Who's the person you want to be talking to in the realm of the Spirit in order for things to change? Well, you want to talk to the Father. 
You know, you want to talk to your heavenly father. You want to talk to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Because when he decrees, something happens. When he decrees, things change. So why do we waste so much time going here, there, and everywhere else without first going to our Heavenly Father, bringing the thing before Him that needs to be addressed, and seeing what He says about it, and seeing what His directive is about it, seeing what His direction is for us. You know, that there is a way for us to live while we're here in this life. There is a way for us to conduct ourselves. There is a way for us to engage in our humanity. There is a way for us to walk out of this whole thing as overcomers, to exit this life, to exit this world. You know, this, this is... Uh, you know, this is this is my last go around here. <laughs> so, as God um, wills and plans and intends, you know, um, you know, God willing and God enabling, this is my last go around in this place. So, <clears throat> that being the case, you know, how do we and how do I um, complete the plan, the purpose, the time, the the experience that God would have and also be efficient about things too because you know you can waste you can waste so much of your life and your time and your energy and your effort um, in foolishness you know God has said that anything done apart from him is is useless all your works apart from him are like filthy rags in God's sight you know, it's only the things that are done in connection with His Spirit. Well, there's a lot of people out there that have their entire life. They've never done anything in connection with the Spirit. There's there's a lot of people that maybe they're, for their life, maybe there's only a handful of things that they've ever done in connection with the leading and the guiding of the Spirit of God. And the rest has been their own self-will. Well, the only thing that will last and the only thing that will have any eternal value is that which is done in connection and in concert with the Spirit of God. All the rest of it is vanity. All the rest of it is meaningless. Ecclesiastes 12 says, you know, now this is, now here's the summary of the matter. You know, after going through everything that a person can do in this life, you know, all the works, all the pleasures, all the distractions, all the building projects, all the other stuff. So this is the whole duty of man, to fear the Lord and to keep his commandments. For God will bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or evil. You know, that is the conclusion of the matter. And the conclusion of the matter is to focus and to just walk in connection for us. You know, cause, and then let the rest of it be what it is. You know, if you... Eh, you know, I remember, I remember, I just have a lot of things come back to me today, but I remember one time um, <clears throat> there was somebody that... that I, it was, I was in the morning one day and I was... I was sitting down to pray, and was uh, sitting down to pray, and God spoke to me while I was getting, while I was starting to go into a time of prayer, and He was like, actually, He's like, He said, He wanted me to to get up and to go to a particular place, and um, that was all I knew. So I was like, okay, so I got up and I went to this particular place, and I ended up meeting these two people at that place. And um, that turned into a whole bunch of things that I ended up um, being involved with and working with over the next several years. Now, if I was if I was in a set of religious programming at the time, and if I didn't listen to the thing that God spoke to me when I was sitting down to pray, um, I would have been like, "No, no, no! This is my time to pray." This is the time to do this service unto God. You know, no. Like, prayer is, is connection and it's communication and, it's, it's, uh, and it's, it's pouring your heart out before Him and it's also receiving from Him and, and hearing His voice. And, hearing, and so in that relationship, when He says something to you, we <clears throat> obey. So in that situation, if I would not have listened to his voice and obeyed, 
the work that I would have been doing at that point afterwards to stay and to to try to do some time of prayer would have actually been apart from him because I wasn't moving with him. So I could have been doing something in my own self-will, but I would have missed the actual thing that God wanted me to do. And when I did the actual thing that God wanted me to do, I saw um, his hand in it. So things are not what they are on the surface. You know, you, you, God looks beyond the surface. He looks to see that which is within. You know, you see that with Samuel when he had to select um, God's replacement for Saul. And, you know, he went through the different sons of Jesse. And on the surface, Samuel looked at them and the, the you know, first one came out and he's like, oh, this has got to be the guy. On the surface, the guy looked the part. But God said that he'd rejected him. And he'd rejected all of them, actually, until it got to David. Why? Because there was something within David. There was something within David that God, just God loved him. And he loved God. He was a man after his own heart. That's what the scriptures say. Was David flawed? Absolutely. Did David make mistakes? Absolutely. Was David, um, you know, a good father? Not the best. <laughs> he made a lot of mistakes in that department. Was David, uh, you know, <clears throat> but David was raw and real before God. He was who he was before God. And he loved God with the, all of his heart. And when he, when things were revealed to him that where he was off, he, he would repent and seek to get right and to follow God. And he trusted him all the days of his life. And God, what a life. You know, what an adventure. What a fulfilled life. You know, so often too, so often what people, you know, in the world, the way the world system works on people is it, it gets all the people thinking, look, if you can just get enough money, if you can just get enough resource, if you can just get enough power together, then you can maybe, you know, enjoy those last few years of the end of your life experience where you're, you're um, gumming peas, you know, on a beach somewhere, um, you know, it, it just sells this uh, this complete waste of a life to people. Whereas, <clears throat> what God does is He, you know, what you you what you want and what you need is not it's not money per se. What you want is you want a fulfilled life. You know, and only God can give you that. Only God can give you a purpose um, and a reason. And a fulfilled life and a fulfilled existence. And as far as the resources that you need, the scriptures have already spoken about that. It said, don't worry about, um, don't worry about the morrow. Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. It said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, speaking specifically of your needs, will be added unto you. God will take care of your needs. He knows you have them. And But you, you put the first thing first. You seek first the kingdom. You seek first his righteousness. And he's going to take care of the other things that need to be taken care of in an incredible way. And that's going to be part of your adventure and part of your testimony. It's going to be like, wow, look at what God did. <clears throat> look at the way that he took care of this. Look at the way that he took care of that. And you trust him. And if you have a need, you bring it before the Father. You walk right in and you walk straight before the throne. You don't have to stop and get an appointment with the secretary. You've got that access. And you take it before him and you pray. And then you watch and see what God does. And if he gives you something to do, you do it. <clears throat> we're talking about how we live while we're here in this life. And you need to break off the shackles of the enemy. And you need to break off those thought processes that the devil gives us. Because the devil will seek to steal, to kill, to destroy, and to keep you away from God's plan and purpose for your life. So in order for you to walk it out, you've got to trust the Father and you've got to obey as he would reveal things to you. So, yeah, this is... This is uh, some practical stuff right now because amidst all that goes on in the world at such a time as this, you've got to also know that um, that there are uh, very specific things that God's given us so that you can walk out this life and that you can live an overcoming life for all of your days while you're here on the earth. Yeah, unapologetically. 
you know you can put your shoulders back pick your head up and and walk this thing out knowing that you're a, you're you're the child of a king so <clears throat> yeah so god bless you guys um hey drop us an email faithmix at gmail.com say hi you know uh, we always love to hear you guys and hear from you guys when you get a chance to write us um yeah a little bit of music there that's that intro song we'll close with that too is that it's called down to the wire um by buddy xavier effects out there god bless you brother and um yeah you know drop and also guys keep in mind uh, the 20th keep everybody in prayer as we lead up to it um we go into a global global cosmic clash as we displace um demonic <laughs> powers and presences um to you know be part of what god is doing <clears throat> which is um you know fulfilling things that he's already put in the scriptures you know he is shaking everything that can be shaken you know, that is what he's doing and that is what he's going to continue to do um as he establishes his kingdom his kingdom come and his will be done in jesus name and I just want to pray for you guys really quick. God, I, I, in Jesus' name, Father, I just pray for everybody that's listening this day. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you keep them. I pray that you protect them. I pray that you watch over each and every one of them. And I pray that as they seek your face and as they look to you, Father, that you would just speak to them in the most amazing and powerful ways. And Lord, that I pray that all of their needs would be met in abundance to overflowing. And I pray, Father, that um, each and every one of them, their hearts would be encouraged this day in the truth and the reality of who they are in in you, Jesus. We love them, Father, and we just pray, Lord God, that, that the love that we all have for one another would just overflow in all of our hearts as we see the amazingness of what it is to be your children walking on the earth at such a time as this. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right, so God bless you guys. We love you. Um, we keep on keeping on. And we'll be catching up with you all sometime really, really soon. God bless you. Bye.